Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Dr. Rogerio Lillenbaum. I'm the senior physician executive for oncology at Banner MD Anderson and uh, Banner Health. Thank you so much for uh, joining us this evening for the first uh, Banner MD Anderson Cancer Center at Home Together webinar in 2021. Thank you so much for joining this evening and for um, spending time with us and our experts uh, uh, tonight. Um, I will uh, introduce all the speakers uh, for today's uh, panel. It's my great uh, pleasure to start with Dr. Uh, David Paul. Dr. Paul is the physician executive at Banner MD Anderson at Banner University Medical Center in Phoenix and, and a beloved member of the medical community here in Phoenix and Arizona. Um, Dr. Joining Dr. Paul is Dr. Rachit Kumar, who is a section chief uh, uh, in the Division of Radiation Oncology for Banner MD Anderson and works closely with uh, Dr. Paul, Paul also in the downtown uh, location. Uh, Dr. Kumar also uh, sees uh, patients in the East Valley and here, uh, here at the Gateway uh, campus. Uh, and, and last but not least, I'm pleased to uh, introduce Dr. Tom uh, Dragovich, uh, who is the interim chief of the Division of Cancer Medicine and the chief of the uh, Division of Clinical Research. So thank you all so much for uh, uh, being our speakers tonight. Our topic uh, uh, for tonight is personalized medicine. Now that means different things to different people and depending on the context, of course. In the clinical space, it means precision medicine. Uh, the ability to create individualized treatment plans uh, for each patient that we see in uh, clinical practice. Care cancer uh, protocols that are tailored to the individual characteristics of the patient, sometimes all the way down to certain molecular features uh, that are present in their tumors. Um, to others, um, the meaning of personalized medicine is uh, different. It's more of a, an image of um, healthcare professionals who care about you as an individual, as a person, who um, look at, this, the, the, uh, at the situation holistically and not just from a medical perspective. Um, all of our physicians, all of our team members at Banner MD Anderson, uh, in a way, provide personalized care to our patients. Um, we have experts in our program who uh, are able to utilize their knowledge and expertise to develop and propose uh, treatment plans that take into consideration all the unique aspects of that uh, person's disease and condition and stage and other characteristics. And we have a fantastic uh, uh, team uh, of uh, nurses and MAs and staff members and advanced practice uh, professionals who uh, really take in um, everything that we know from that person in front of us who happens to be a patient at the time, uh, along with their families, and, and, and formulate a, a way to support them during this journey and throughout their um, cancer diagnosis and treatment. I, I honestly hope that you find the program informative. Uh, I know that you will hear uh, the latest and the greatest in terms of precision medicine and how we evolved in the past 10 or 15 years to very targeted treatments you know, to uh, attack uh, cancer cells. 
um, I, I am particularly pleased and honored uh, to introduce a special guest that uh, uh, with us uh, tonight, uh, a patient of both Dr. Paul and Dr. Kumar, who is a celebrated uh, artist who uh, works uh, with uh, both private, corporate, and public collections. Jackie Keller is with us tonight. Uh, Jackie's art is represented by Quantum Art in Scottsdale, and her work is eagerly collected and commissioned internationally. We're truly honored to have Jackie with us tonight and have her share her comments and perspectives as a patient. Uh, with that, I will hand the program now to Dr. David Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Lillibon. Hello, everyone. It's a, a great uh, honor and uh, opportunity to share with you the exciting developments that we have uh, going on here at Banner University Medical Center here at the Banner MD Anderson Cancer Center. My name is David Paul, and I'm the physician executive um, for this cancer center. Uh, I've been tasked to go over some uh, housekeeping details uh, as the run of the show this evening, so we'll start with that. Today's session is being recorded, so the audience is muted during the presentation. At the end of the program, you will have the opportunity to ask questions to any of the presenters. To do so, please feel free to submit your questions throughout the program or at any time using the chat icon at the bottom of your screen. The questions will be gathered and moderated during the Q&A portion of our program. We will try to get to as many as we can, and whatever questions we are unable to get to will be included in a Q&A sec section that will be posted to our resource website following the program. So with that, let's get going. First, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a typical Midwestern transplant drawn here initially by the weather. Many experiences were formative in my becoming an oncologist. Certainly seeing my favorite aunt die at age 36 from metastatic breast cancer uh, when I was in college touched me deeply. The study of cancers for the first time in anatomy and physiology in medical school were fascinating to me. Finally, it was in the 12th month of my intern year uh, after rotating on all of the other subspecialties, I had my epiphany on the oncology ward. It was supposedly our least favorite, least popular rotation, and I was told I would have an horrendous month. I met my first cancer patient on that ward and it changed my life forever. It is a special invitation to be asked into that circle of trust at a time when a patient is likely the most scared he or she has ever been. It is a place where I find myself at ease, hoping to comfort, inform, connect, and ultimately treat. I tend to use humor and stories while teaching patients, which I hope makes me relatable and allows that trust to begin. I'm a board certified medical oncologist and hematologist and have been practicing on this campus since 1995. In fact, I did my internal medicine residency here before going off to Vanderbilt for fellowship training. I'm telling you all of this just to say that this hospital and campus have been my home from the beginning of my medical career. I am proud of my longstanding association with this outstanding medical center. It was with pride and joy that my partners and I joined Banner MD Anderson in the summer of 2018 to begin the work of creating this regional cancer center. We were drawn to this project for many reasons. In private practice, we were always strongly Banner aligned. As oncologists, we always had the awareness of MD Anderson in Houston as being the perennial number one cancer center in the country. They planted their largest satellite outside of Houston in 2011 in Gilbert at Banner Gateway. Since then, that footprint has grown. As these pictures demonstrate, Banner MD Anderson has extended its reach in Arizona from the East Valley to include clinics at Banner Desert, Banner Thunderbird, and Banner Boswell. We have also uh, extended our reach uh, to Northern Colorado. So in 2018, Banner MD Anderson centers were uh, initiated at McKee Medical Center in Loveland, Colorado, and Northern Colorado Medical Center in Greeley, Colorado. So our new three-story Banner MD Anderson Cancer Center opened in 2019 on the campus of Banner University Medical Center Phoenix in the heart of downtown. We had the opportunity to come in on the ground floor, and that is literal, 
of a dedicated cancer center that could be integrated with the main center in the East Valley and the other Banner M. Anderson clinics with a multidisciplinary team. From that beginning, we've begun growing multidisciplinary programs that are integrated across multiple sites. Multidisciplinary care is a hallmark of cancer care at MD Anderson, and we seek to provide that same level of integrated care for each cancer type at Banner MD Anderson Cancer Center. Teams of specialists care for the patient from diagnosis through survivorship. And those teams may include oncology nurse navigators, medical oncologists, surgeons, radiation oncologists, genetic counselors, the nursing team, physical therapists, radiologists, pathologists, case managers, and many others. It is a patient-centered approach to delivering care in one location, encouraging dialogue between and across disciplines to develop the very best treatment plan for each individual patient. It provides the opportunity for a patient to visit the cancer center and meet with their care team all in one day. A patient can do their labs, get their imaging, see their provider team, and leave with a plan. It is a differentiator between MD Anderson and Banner MD Anderson compared to other programs, and the structure provides an excellent horizontal platform for research. This affords the opportunity for multidisciplinary clinics and tumor boards, where a patient's care team meets to discuss the best possible cancer treatment and care plan for an individual patient with expert participation across sites and greater standardization of care. This model gives our patients access to subspecialty experts, state-of-the-art technology, and clinical trials. Clinical pharmacists provide oversight and education with the delivery of our chemotherapy protocols. Patients can have appointments with a supportive care physician for symptom management, registered dietitians, psycho-oncology counseling, and even a chaplain all supporting patients from these many angles. There are certainly outstanding private physicians in various specialties caring for patients with cancer in our community. We practiced for years in that setting by building our own adjunct networks to get patients the care they needed, but it required complicated coordination of care across multiple sites, multiple practices, and multiple facilities. We often did this in our own silos but conferring with one another for difficult cases or reaching out to relationships with experts that we had. The multidisciplinary care provided at Banner MD Anderson Cancer Center not only affords a greater efficiency for the patients, we are literally working side by side with colleagues from other disciplines. It is truly a one-stop shop. We can focus attention on our own subspecialty interests and have access to a bank of experts from every major area in oncology across the Banner MD Anderson network, as well as MD Anderson in Houston. Our new center opened on the first floor of this three-story 75,000 square foot building in June, 2019. The building was constructed to allow for expansion to the second and third floors over time. After only one year, we were far exceeding the volumes anticipated for new patients, programmatic growth and infusion. So work quickly began on phase two of the facility in the fall of 2020. The architectural planning for the remaining floors is nearing completion, and we hope to start construction later this year and open the new areas in early 2022. This build out will include expansion of the number of infusion bays from 12 to 42, the number of exam rooms from 19 to 35, placement of the Laura Dreyer Breast Center in a new comprehensive breast uh, cancer center, a new PET CT and expansion of other services. We are proud to announce the recent launch of a new uh, neuro-oncology program led by a nationally recognized neuro-oncologist, Dr. Natasha Gatson. She is a leading, uh, she is leading a multidisciplinary clinic integrated with neurosurgery and radiation oncology with a weekly tumor board and plans for a robust clinical trials program. We have four medical oncologists, each with subspecialty interests with an active recruit of a fifth. There are three radiation oncologists also with subspecialty interests. There are seven surgical oncologists serving the cancer center, three focused on our breast program, which includes a plastic surgeon, three dedicated to head and neck pathology, and a fourth focused on melanoma. We are credentialing two colorectal surgeons to join us as well. There is active advanced practice practitioner or APP support 
with seven APPs assigned to various services. APPs include nurse practitioners and physician assistants. All of these providers are supported by a dedicated staff of caring nurses and other health professionals and a leadership team caring for patient needs. Our team is focused on providing personalized cancer care tailored to individual patients based on their predicted response or risk of disease using the most targeted therapies available. Our mission of making cancer history is sincere. That little red line that strikes out the word cancer means a great deal to us as we focus daily to truly make cancer history. All of the expansion and growth of our programs is with that desire in mind. Now at this point, I'd like to turn your attention to my radiation oncology colleague, Dr. Rachit Kumar. He will share how cancer care has evolved, including exciting advances in technology that allow for greater levels of precision in targeting tumors. Dr. Kumar. Dr. Paul, thank you so much. My name is Rachit Kumar. I'm a radiation oncologist here at Banner MD Anderson Cancer Center. And one of my roles is to serve as the section chief for the Central and Northwest Divisions so I helped to lead our radiation program here downtown. So a little bit about me first, I grew up in a small town in Northern India. My family and I emigrated to the US when I was three years old and settled in Lexington, Kentucky. I remain a diehard Kentucky Wildcat fan. At that point, we moved to Arizona when I was nine, settling in Yuma, where I spent what I would describe as the majority of my formative youth in uh, elementary, junior high, and high school. Then moved to Tucson, where I spent 10 years in undergrad medical school and doing my internship. I was very fortunate to spend four years then at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore for my residency before returning to Phoenix to take a job here with Banner MD Anderson. So people often ask, what brought me back to the desert to continue my practice and start my career here? And first and foremost, it was the patients. The patients here are my neighbors, they're my friends, they're my colleagues. And it brings me great joy and is one of the great honors of my life to be able to help care for them. My teammates here are exceptional and I have great trust in my colleagues and know that they are doing the best for their patients at all times. I am surrounded here as well as in Houston by a immense amount of expertise and I learn greatly from my colleagues in this on a daily basis. The research program that we have here is strong and growing and Dr. Dragovich will spend some more time talking about that today. And then the vision that we have that Dr. Lillenbaum has outlined of becoming a world-class cancer destination for patients is something that we all hold on to very dearly. So how are we going to evolve cancer care here at university? Number one, as Dr. Paul alluded to, uh, we, are, we are trying and we are actively succeeding in moving towards a team-based approach. And secondly, we wanna bring in the most advanced technology for our patients here. So what is the traditional cancer pathway? For many of our patients, they are familiar with this. A patient is diagnosed. They'll often be sent to one physician to begin the workup. That physician may send them to another physician who may then send them to a third physician. And so this pathway of being sent from one provider to the next with multiple tests being ordered in between can delay patient care. There can be further imaging and further diagnostic tests that need to be done. And not only does this lead to lower patient satisfaction, but also this delay can be significant in terms of our ability to help cure certain cancers. So what is the alternative to this pathway? The alternative to this pathway is what we describe as the multidisciplinary pathway. So as opposed to a patient coming in meeting with one physician, a patient will come in and meet with multiple physicians at one time who are all experts in one specific cancer type. Within the walls of this cancer center, that patient may also be connected to other specialists because we know cancer doesn't occur in a box and we have other important support services that patients need as they go through this process. What we find with this is this team-centric coordinated approach is more efficient for patient care. Patients feel like they are being cared for from the beginning by a team that understands their treatment and diagnosis in depth and also our research has shown that patients are patients actually have improved outcomes when using this methodology, uh, including research we've done here at Banner MD Anderson. So our goal and our expectation is, is to build teams that have expertise in certain cancer types and that these treatment plans for patients will be tumor, 
and patient specific and be done in a coordinated fashion as opposed to a disjointed fashion. And how are we achieving this? So for patients that come in with a new brain tumor, those patients may see our brain tumor team at the very beginning. Dr. Nakaji, or one of our neurosurgeons, Dr. Gatson, and Dr. Roberts, who's one of our radiation oncologists, may see the patient together in their multidisciplinary clinic on a Tuesday. For patients with breast cancer, they may see Dr. Pistanchi, one of our breast surgeons, Dr. Paul, and one of my colleagues, Dr. Sungve, in radiation oncology at their multidisciplinary clinic on a Monday. For patients that come in with head and neck cancer, uh, for example, a throat cancer or a tongue cancer, those patients may see Dr. Tomei, one of our surgeons, Dr. B, one of our medical oncologists, and myself at our multidisciplinary clinic on a Thursday. And so as a team, we are aiming to see patients together and provide them with a diagnosis and treatment in a uh, combined fashion. So in addition to this team-centric multidisciplinary approach, what we're also using is the next generation of cancer care to help our patients in terms of technology. On this next slide, what we're gonna see is a, a machine called the ZAP. And what this spherical device is, is a self-contained radiation linear accelerator that is designed to help treat brain tumors. And on this picture, you'll see a little black table to the left. And what this little table does is whisk patients inside this sphere where thousands of little beams of radiation will focus on their tumor. And on the next slide, we'll be able to see that there's a patient sitting on that table on the left. And on the representation on the right, those are those little beams of radiation in yellow that are all pointed to a brain tumor. What that allows us to do is focus a high dose of radiation on the tumor itself and minimize how much radiation goes to the normal tissues within the brain nearby. But further, one of the really interesting things about this machine is that that machine actually can sit in your living room. You can be watching TV next to the machine and it is safe for patients to receive radiation next to you in that. And that's really a, 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 a defining characteristic of how next generation that treatment is. What you're seeing on this slide right now is what's called a PET-CT scan. And a PET-CT scan is often used as a diagnostic mechanism for different types of cancer. On the top left of this screen in black and white is a CT scan. And many of you are very familiar with a CT scan. It allows us to see the anatomy of a patient. On that top left image, what you're seeing is a CT scan of a patient's abdomen with a pancreas tumor that's outlined in red. On the top right, what you're seeing is a PET scan. A PET scan uses a radioactive sugar that goes all throughout the body and highlights an area of the body that is very active. In this case, that area of bright yellow is that same pancreas tumor that's now lighting up. When you combine those two, what you find on that bottom image is that now we're able to identify more accurately based on the tumor biology, where the tumor is, rather than using a more broad approach, which is just what the CT scan would show. The combination of these technologies allow us to focus more accurately on where the tumor is and spare the normal tissues nearby. And finally, one of the treatment techniques that we have employed at one of our other Banner MD Anderson cancer sites is the use of something called high dose rate prostate brachytherapy in the treatment of patients with localized prostate cancer. So as many of you know, prostate cancer is the most common diagnosis of cancer in men. There are many different ways to treat it, one of which is to use what's called brachytherapy, which is the insertion of little radioactive pellets into the prostate. Classically, it's a very effective technique, but can come with a lot of side effects. On that top right picture, what you're seeing is those little yellow lines are actually little needles that are placed directly into the prostate. And we connect those needles to a machine that has a tiny piece of radiation in it. That piece of radiation will go into the prostate and deliver radiation directly to the prostate itself and minimize how much radiation goes elsewhere. On the bottom right of that image, the prostate is outlined in red, and underneath it, the rectum is outlined in blue. What we can see there is, is that that white line, which is the high dose of radiation to our target, is focused on the red and avoids the blue. And that precision radiation helps us make sure that the radiation is going where it's supposed to go and avoiding what it's supposed to avoid. And this is some next generation technology that is only done in a limited fashion throughout the US that we're already using at the Banner MD Anderson Cancer Network that we are going to be employing here at university as well. 
So again, our team here at Banner MD Anderson, the next generation of cancer care will again be to utilize a team-driven approach with experts in your type of cancer that is gonna focus on your specific tumor. So a team-driven patient-centric approach. And we're going to employ the most advanced technologies to allow us to identify and target your tumor while also sparing normal tissue is allowing for the highest quality of life for our patients. I'd like to now introduce Dr. Tom Dragovich. He's our section chief for the Center of Clinical Research, and he's gonna be speaking to us about the advancements that we have in our clinical research team. Dr. Dragovich. Thank you, Dr. Kumar. And thank you all of you for joining us tonight. Um, it's a great pleasure to talk to all of you about um, research at Banner MD Anderson Cancer Center and uh, uh, how the research contributes to overall vision and mission of the Cancer Center. So our vision is to become a premier clinical cancer research program, which is founded, as you know, on the experience um, and resources of both Banner Research and MD Anderson Cancer Center Research Program, and this in order to advance cancer care in Phoenix and Southwest Western United States. And this is a tall uh, uh, and, and high mark to, to, to reach, but very important one for us at this day and age. And the reason for it is, um, if we can have a next slide, please, that as you many of you already know, uh, that a lot of recent breakthroughs in cancer therapy are the result of prior research, including clinical research that brings these promising drugs from the laboratory to the clinic. And yet, despite that, more than 1,500 people die each day uh, from cancer in the United States. That is more than one person every minute. And I think that is uh, something that we're all very passionate about uh, to try to stop that uh, trend and, and improve that statistics by translating the most promising findings from laboratory uh, done sometimes by brilliant research teams to, to our patients in the clinic. Next slide. And uh, we have really this obligation to our patients, I call it sacred covenant, uh, because they do take an active part in advancing cancer care through clinical research. They're giving us their time, energy, and hope, and we can only do it right for them. And these are some of the faces and stories uh, that have uh, participated in clinical research at Banner MD Anderson Cancer Center. And I'm really grateful for them to allowing us to share their pictures and, and their words with, with all of you. Next slide. Uh, we have started, we had a humble beginnings. Uh, as you know, Cancer Center started uh, uh, in 2011, 2012, first year operation. And we really started building our clinical research program in 2016. Since then, we had more than uh, 1, um, and, uh, 1,100 patients entered on clinical trials. We have a total of 185 cancer trials open since then. And five of these trials have translated in new cancer uh, drug approvals by FDA. Uh, we were uh, among the first in the world to open several of these trials. And we were the first center in Arizona to uh, participate in so-called CAR-T trials, which are very exciting cellular therapy uh, protocols for patients with hematological cancers. And most importantly, we are trying to bring clinical research to our patients uh, wherever they are, uh, and as Dr. Uh, Paul mentioned, we will be offering clinical trials at Banner University Medical Center in Phoenix, at Banner Boswell and Del Webb in Northwest Phoenix, and we already have active clinical research program in Northern Colorado. Next slide. How does clinical research relate to personalized cancer medicine? Again, we have seen tremendous achievements in the clinical and uh, translational research. And it all, all goes into discovery that uh, cancer is a, is a personal disease. 
Uh, and even, uh, you know, if you have a breast cancer or colon cancer, they are not all alike. And the differences, very often subtle differences in cancer genes can dictate how your cancer behaves, how long do you live, and what type of treatment is best for you. So we used to say for personalized cancer care, the right drug for the right patient at the right time. And how do we find that out? We find that out through clinical research. And as you can see in this little cartoon, multiple, we identify first a specific genetic feature of the cancer. Then we replicate it in an animal or other experimental model. In this case, we see this little mice there and test multiple drugs until we find which one are most promising. And then we test it in patients and they eventually make their way into our clinic and best clinical practices. Next slide, please. Uh, and it's really, really exciting uh, to see uh, advances we, um, that we have had in the last several years. Uh, one of the major advances is really realizing how to turn on our immune system to fight cancer. Um, as you know, uh, um, uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center researcher got a Nobel Prize for that uh, participation, that research uh, uh, last year. Um, really, how do you awaken that force within to, to fight and quite often elim eliminate the cancer? And this is not any more uh, an anecdote or story. I, I'm really pleased to see everyday patients in, in our cancer center that have been, but in some ways, written off years ago and told that there is really not that much that could be done. But because of availability of clinical research, they ended up participating in our trials. And there is a, one example here, the patient with um, stage four terminal cancer of the colon went through multiple therapies and was really advised to go to hospice, came into our um, program. He had, as you can see here on the left uh, picture, there's these tumors in his lungs and was having difficulty breathing and pain. And we uh, were able to enroll him in a trial of immunotherapy with two promising agents. And then uh, eight months after therapy, you can see that there's really nothing there, maybe a little scarring tissue. Now that patient is now um, six years out of uh, the, from this moment. And the last three years, he's been off therapy and had no evidence of cancer. So. As I said, the promise uh, of research is really delivering at, at this day and age, and we want to bring it closer to our patients. Next slide, please. Uh, and this is a, something that's very important for our clinicians, for our physicians. Uh, oncology is always trying to move that bar in how well we can treat our patients, and, and it attracts the brightest um, and best among the oncologists to become part of our cancer center, and some of them are great. The, uh, the, um, get a great national visibility um, and tend uh, to be uh, participants in some of these major practice changing clinical trials, as we see here with Dr. Mina, who is our leader of breast cancer program, Dr. Munoz, who was our lymphoma specialist. So more stories like this uh, are, are, are going to come our way. Um, next slide. So at the end, I just wanted to really thank you um, for partnering with us um, and, and being here from early days. I know that a lot of things and strides that we made at this place would not be possible without charitable support and any support from you, uh, from your um, you know, uh, partners, your families and the individuals in community. So uh, I know that you will stay engaged, connected with us and, and help us uh, along on this journey to put an end to cancer. Um, so this is the end of my presentation, and uh, I'm happy to answer the question, but I, I really have a true uh, um, uh, pleasure, and I think we're blessed to have uh, our uh, 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 speaker, special speaker tonight, uh, Jackie Keller. So we leave the best for, for, for last. Uh, Jackie uh, is a cancer survivor. She was cared for by Dr. David Paul and Dr. Rachid Kumar. And Jackie is a very accomplished, internationally renowned artist. And I find that amazing. I always feel that artist has the best ability to relate emotions and experiences to, to all of us and, and to the public. So I think we're really blessed to have Jackie 
uh, with us tonight, and she will also uh, be our moderator in the Q and A session after after this presentation. So um, thank you, Jackie, and please take it from here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for asking me to join you tonight. I really am very honored. Um, I really wish I could have met you all at a ball game or at an art walk, but cancer is what brought us together. My cancer journey started in 2018 with a strange first symptom. The first, the left side of my face went numb one night in June. Being in my late 60s and fearing a stroke or something like it, my hubby took me to the emergency room, of course. They found nothing wrong and the numbness subsided in about seven hours. Okay, I reassured myself just from the heat. I made, I made the recommended appointment with the neurologist. They would see me in a few weeks. Then a week later, the same thing. I woke up with the same numbness on the left side of my face. And I, as I still had no answers, and my neurology appointment was still a week plus away, I headed back to the emergency department. Again, nothing obvious. They just emphasized that I keep my neurology appointment, which I did. The big difference this time was that the numbness and tingling increased and never went away. So that was the beginning of several months of the neurologist assuming it was a virus in my trigeminal nerve and an ENT who decided there might be something wonky in my left lower mandible and suggested I find a maxillofacial surgeon. So enter here, Banner, finally, and your maxillofacial surgeon, Dr. Secure, who scheduled a surgical biopsy that he assumed would include drilling into my jawbone. But once the gum was pulled away, a large hole in the bone was revealed. We were hoping it was a bone cyst. It was not. Surprisingly, I was diagnosed with a soft tissue cancer, diffused large B-cell lymphoma in my jawbone. Dr. Sapir was kind enough to get me into Dr. Paul that same week. Now, for those of you not familiar with hearing that you have cancer words, let me tell you, the fearless woman that I thought I was was thoroughly shaken. Even being accompanied by my daughter and my husband, I was shaking so hard into walking into that exam room that I could not sit on the exam table. But then enter Dr. Paul. He was cordial. He was kind. He was calm. He gave us the confidence we needed. And he had a to-do to list for me. Port, pet scan, blood work. And he'd work on making the bigger plan. He had resources beyond this exam room doors with his stellar team, with Banner Radiation Oncology, and with Banner MD Anderson's lymphoma team in Houston. He explained every step. So by the second visit with Dr. Paul, my list was complete and he had my plan. Three months of RCHOP and a month of radiation. Now I'm not so proud of this part. Before I had a chance to meet Dr. Kumar, I had a panic attack right there in his office. Just when you think you have it all together, this day I did not. I left my hubby in the exam room to do my bidding for yet another appointment. Yes, he was sure I would come back. And I did. And was met by Dr. Kumar and his amazing team of professionals. We even laughed a little about my sudden uncharacteristic departure. I'm still sorry. Like his colleagues, Dr. Kumar's demeanor is also calming, kind, and caring. He answered every question, even the one questions, even the ones I didn't know I had. And his team made me that face mask, headgear thing. Well, that was just crazy. And a whole other conversation. Well, it did keep me still. As a patient, you get to see these radiation professionals every day, five days a week. A couple silly jokes and they were like family. Well, like the smart family. And the precision with which they can administer radiation amazes me still. I still have the teeth whose roots are hanging into that hole in my jaw, and they are still intact. 
Now you can see that Banner has a great team of heroes. They're my heroes too. And I also get the sense when I'm with them that I'm getting the very best of them, the best plan, the best care, their undivided attention. My treatment was completed a few months before we moved into the new facility on McDowell. But even without that centralized location, I felt my cancer experience was so much better than the stories from friends of their fragmented care. Folks who had experienced cancer and had to run around looking for specialists, get blood work, hope their doctors were responding to each other. They had to navigate it on their own. And I never felt alone, never. My Banner MD Anderson experience is what you would hope your care would be. From the front desk, Terry felt like a friend, a son. To the Eds, one in Dr. Paul's office and one in Dr. Kumar's. They were sweet and they were funny. To Alyssa, my chemo nurse, whom I still adore, and so, so, so many more stellar human beings. To a medical professional, personalized care means precision medicine with coordinated treatment. And you all do that so well. But to me, personalized care is understanding your patients, reading them, calming their fears, and meeting them where they are emotionally. Your hearts are in this battle with us and we feel it. Personalized care has never been done better than with these good doctors, along with their NPs, their nurses, their nutritionists, technicians, the entire staff. They do it so well that in just three days, I'll be two years post-treatment and two years cancer-free. And I am beyond grateful. Thank you so much. Okay, now that I have bent your ears, our good doctors are going to use the remaining time to answer your questions. We have already received quite a few, so let's begin with those. Please use the chat function at the bottom of the screen to send in your questions and know that if they're not addressed tonight, they will be added to the Q&A section on the resource page following this event. Okay, our first Question is to Dr. Dragovich. Is immunotherapy widely available now for all forms of cancer, or is it still fairly experimental? Thank you. This is a great question. Um, I would say the answer is both. It is available for many types of cancers. It is approved as a standard of care, for example, lung cancer, melanoma, um, uh, bladder cancers, and, and some of the other cancers, including lymphomas and so on. Um, however, it's still experimental in some forms of cancers. We're still trying to optimize the best use of immunotherapy drugs uh, for certain types of cancers. Um, you know, it's not a, 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 a one, one size fits all. Again, this is, the, this is the dogma of personalized medicine. Each cancer really, really has a little bit of a you know, different genetic background and is um, has a different way of hiding from immune system or being, um, you know, responsive to our immune system. So that's why, uh, you know, it's both. We have approved drugs uh, in the immunotherapy space, but we also continue to do a lot of clinical research. So talk to your physician, oncologist, uh, get a second opinion. There are a lot of options out there. Hey, this one's for Dr. Paul. What do you believe is the big, biggest success in the partnership between Banner Health and the University of Texas MD Anderson? Well, when I look back over these uh, last 25 years, I mean, a, a lot has changed in the, the landscape of this, uh, of this valley. Um, just for perspective, you know, starting in 95, I mean, you couldn't get a bone marrow transplant here. Now, I had patients who were traveling to Seattle and various places, um, you know, for the highest level of sophisticated care. So I think this is um, this partnership between uh, MD Anderson uh, in Houston and, and Banner uh, Banner Health uh, leverages, you know, the best healthcare system in the Southwest with what's been recognized year in and year out as the, the best cancer center um, in the country. So as we've been talking in all these different examples, you know, being able to bring um, you know, this multidisciplinary integrated care 
um, to these multiple sites now across the valley with our main center being in Gilbert. Um, I think we're bringing you know, another level of, of cancer care to, to patients in the valley where they don't need to, to travel um, like they once did. Okay. Dr. Kumar, let's go to you. Are there any other recent advances in the field of oncology, like the ZAP machine you talked about? Anything else really promising that you've heard about? And yeah, thank you for that question. I think that one of the best and most challenging things about the field of cancer care is that there are advances literally being made on a week to week basis. And that makes it both incredibly satisfying to practice this profession, but also very challenging that we have to stay on top of those. I think that what Dr. Dragovich and Dr. Paul talked about in terms of immunotherapy and sequence, sequencing multiple chemotherapies has come a long way. And, and I believe that the overall field of cancer has been improved dramatically by those advances in what we call systemic therapy, treatments that go throughout the body. From a radiation standpoint, I would say that there is a lot more focus nowadays on doing localized radiation with a less number of treatments for many different disease types. We're not talking about doing weeks and weeks of radiation. In many situations, we're trying to reduce the number of treatments so patients have to go back and forth a lot less for treatment. And then many of the advances in radiation are focused on doing smaller areas of radiation as well. So using a technology called stereotactic radiation, which focuses on giving small areas, higher doses of radiation that were previously thought possible, excuse me, previously thought impossible. And, and now have become really routine. And there's a lot of disease sites that have been transformed by that. Additionally, the ways that we are administering radiation, a few of which I talked about today have really changed as well as different technologies, including what we call proton therapy or heavy ion therapy. A lot of the investigations on those are, are resulting in very promising developments. And that's just from a treatment perspective that we're talking about. If you also look at how we're diagnosing tumors in terms of what scans that we're using, that is a whole new area of discovery in which we're able to use different types of PET scans like the one I talked about earlier today to really isolate tumors and to ensure that patients don't have any spread of disease at the beginning of diagnosis. And then at a molecular level, not just saying that a tumor is X cancer or Y cancer, but being able to say that this is an X cancer sub two. So now being able to say that within a cancer, this is a more specific type of genetic profile and then using those genetic profiles to help target tumors. And that has, I think, really revolutionized how we practice cancer care overall. Wow, that's amazing. Dr. Dragovich, will my physician at MD Anderson have access to information about all available clinical trials for my form of cancer, whether those trials are at Banner MD Anderson or not? The answer is, the answer is yes. As Dr. Kumar and Dr. Paul and Dr. Mullenbaum shared with you, we do have a disease expert teams uh, and they're very much aware of what is happening with the uh, advances in cancer therapy in that specific area. So uh, hopefully we'll have a clinical trial that will be best fit for you here in, uh, uh, in Arizona. But if that's not the case, we have a sort of express connection to MD Anderson in Houston. And of course, if there is another trial that's available at UCLA or Memorial Sloan will be happy to refer you for that opportunity if we feel that's the best option for you. So, yes. Wow. Dr. Paul, this is probably a question for the ages. Is it advisable for cancer patients to re receive the COVID vaccine? Dr. Paul, you're on mute. <laughs> Just like in our meetings during the week. Thank you. Um, now we, we are advising uh, patients to get the COVID vaccine uh, wherever, whatever phase they are in their cancer care. This, these are, this is not a live virus. Um, you know, the, the main uh, vaccine that's being used is an mRNA platform. So it's um, allowing our cells to produce the protein that allows our immune system to recognize this, this uh, um, virus in a safe way. 
So whether they're on treatment or they're past treatment, uh, anything that we can uh, do to boost their uh, immune system and prevent serious illness from this virus is warranted. And, and we've had the same policy with uh, the flu vaccine for years now. Great, I got my first one. <laughs> Dr. Dragovich, is some of the cancer research dedicated towards ways to immunize or to minimize treatment side effects and improve patient quality of life during and after treatment? Yes, I think that's a very important component of personalized cancer care. Um, and we are beginning, uh, starting to recognize the importance of healing and building up the body and mind after the chemotherapy or any kind of cancer therapy, radiation surgery is completed. Uh, there is a lot of research going on in that area. And we do have a, what we call sur a survivorship uh, program and survivorship clinic at the Banner MD Anderson Cancer Center, which is really focusing on that aspect of cancer care, how to get the patients through the treatment, you know, make sure they they get the best quality of life, and also how to allow them to heal in the most effective way after they're done with cancer treatment. We also have integrative oncology clinic, with, which does address, uh, you know, some of the um, alternative or supplemental uh, treatments and techniques that are used to really uh, make patients feel as comfortable as they can during the, their therapy. And chemotherapy very often. So. Okay, we're going to go back to Dr. Paul. Does Banner MD Anderson receive funding from MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston? And then I'm going to have a little, an added question. Is are there any plans to expand Banner MD Anderson into Tucson? As far as the first question, no. The um, the relationship with uh, MD Anderson and Houston is primarily um, supervisory and, and, and oversight. So they credential all of our physicians, they credential all of our programs, uh, all of the, uh, the plans, and then we take those plans and move them forward um, here in, in uh, Phoenix. But uh, no, they did not provide for me. As far as the second question, uh, at this time, uh, there are, are not plans uh, to expand to Tucson. Um, at this point. Okay. And Dr. Kumar, can a radiologist tell if a breast lump is cancer versus fibroadenoma? Did I do that right? Um, and is it recommended for the, a fibroadenoma to be surgically removed? Very detailed question. So a fibroadenoma is a benign tumor of the breast that we often see versus a malignant tumor. The difference the being that a benign tumor is unlikely or far less likely to spread elsewhere, unlike a malignant tumor, which we're worried about spreading to other parts of the body. They do have a characteristically different appearance on scans. And then usually what we would do in that situation is we'd recommend a biopsy for a malignant breast cancer. Those are patients who they would typically receive uh, surgery, radiation, possibly chemotherapy, depending on the stage of the disease. And then for patients with a fibroadenoma, either they would be able to remove it, or in many cases, they would just choose to watch it rather than go forward with any further treatment. A, a breast, an experienced breast surgeon is an excellent resource to help address that question. And Dr. Paul, um, someone asked if you are integrating holistic therapies into this per personalized approach. At, you know, at our center, that, that has not happened yet. It's absolutely something I would like to see um, in our future um, development of programs following phase two, you know, getting the second and third floors open. Um, when we first came into the center and we looked all around, we went, oh, wow, this it just seemed like we had so much space on that first floor and um, and it filled uh, dramatically where we just feel like we're pushing at the seams right now to, to do what we've described already. Uh, you know, we have a, a very um, uh, advanced and uh, rich program of holistic therapies um, at our, our main Gilbert Center and we have patients that 
that go there for that. But but I think it's uh, very much a, a goal of ours in order to to bring some of those therapies to each of our regional centers. That's exciting. Dr. Dragovich, have you, have there been any new discoveries for multiple myeloma that might provide hope for remission or a longer life expectancy? Yes, and I'm, 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 I'm thankful for this question. And I you know this is a, always a scary um, diagnosis and concern. The good news is that in the last 10, 10 years, the um, survival of patients with multiple myeloma, myeloma has doubled, uh, mostly because of the discovery of new, um, very effective treatments. I would say in the last five drugs, we have prob five years, we have probably doubled the number of drugs for multiple myeloma that are very effective. And some of them uh, are, um, what I call personalized or targeted therapies. So they, they're not traditional chemotherapy drugs. I would have to say that traditional chemo has a role in the management, but there are also a lot of new drugs last a few years, couple of them, uh, such as venetoclax, daratumumab have gained a, a lot of uh, positive um, impact in, in this disease. Uh, there is also a possibility to consider a type of bone marrow transplant, so-called autologous transplant. Uh, and then uh, cellular therapy, as I mentioned, CAR T cell therapy has been uh, um, tried in this disease and we're still uh, refining and improving this approach. So my point is uh, most of the patients nowadays have, even when they have, you know, quote, incurable disease, they have a uh, you know, 10 to 15 years of, of, of life ahead. And uh, if you remember what I just said, the number of, number of drugs doubled in the last five years, imagine where could we be in 10 years? We, we could have potentially not just life prolonging, but life-saving treatments there too. So I'm very optimistic about that. So, so seek for, uh, look for answers, talk to specialists. We have Dr. Madan here. Uh, and um, I'm sure he'd be happy to see anybody who has uh, questions uh, about this disease. He's our expert. Thank, Thank you. you. You're amazing. Um, unfortunately, we have no more time for additional questions here, but they will be in a Q&A on the resource page. And I'm going to send this back to Dr. Willenbaum. Thank you so much, Eki. Uh, fantastic work. I really appreciate everything you've done uh, for us tonight. A real pleasure to uh, uh, also get to know you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, everyone, I think, uh, hopefully had a sense of what Banner MD Anderson is about. You know, we have a team of experts um, in all of our locations who can provide, you know, uh, the most up-to-date cutting edge treatment plan for each patient that uh, needs uh, our help. And, and at the same time, foster an environment in which our entire focus is on making the experience um, as, as easy, uh, as seamless as possible for that patient and that family. Uh, we're, we're very proud of what we do, uh, and we hope to continue to grow and expand and serve you know, the uh, community here in Greater Phoenix and the state of Arizona, it's a honor to uh, be here and have the opportunity to help our community at a time that they need us the most. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't take a, a minute or two just to underscore how important philanthropy is for the work that Banner MD Anderson does. I wanna thank everyone who has uh, helped us and been a donor to Banner MD Anderson Cancer Center. And just a couple of reminders. One, as a nonprofit organization, we invest all proceeds back into providing programs and services to our patients. Donations also allow us to provide patient assistance, advanced research initiatives, and enhances our ability to serve patients and families. We're really grateful, deeply grateful for uh, all of those who've invested in Banner MD Anderson. I know many of you in this webinar have contributed towards our work. And I just wanted to say, we would not be who we are today without your support. 
If you are interested in making a donation to Banner MD Anderson Cancer Center, there's information on the resource webpage regarding uh, how you can do so. Thank you uh, on my behalf, on behalf of all the speakers and on behalf of Banner MD Anderson, to all of you, to Linda Lott, to the Banner Health Foundation for organizing uh, today's event. And then really uh, my uh, heartfelt appreciation for all of you who have shared part of your evening with us uh, tonight. You are the inspiration for what we do, for why we come to work every day and for uh, why we are who we are. So thank you very much and please uh, stay safe. Good night.